Hey guys, I'm Korajit back again with a new tutorial on Electron and I hope you've been having a great time learning Electron, working with Electron and in this series of tutorials, I'm going to try and make things easier. In this particular tutorial, I'm going to talk about database access, how to set up SQLite with database. Now, in case you didn't know, SQLite is a great database for package applications. It's lightweight. It ships only in one executable. There is not a big library of things to install. It does not need a server installation, kind of like MySQL or SQL Server, and it is perfect for applications. So if you're creating a desktop application and you need to store some data, you can use SQLite and that will work perfectly fine. Now, Electron actually gives you a couple of options. There is an inbuilt store that can store JSON objects, which is perfect for small sized storage bytes. But if you like SQL, if you want to do searches, if you want to use SQL commands, then SQLite is a perfect option for you. Let's get started and see how that will work for you. So I've got a basic Electron project over here. It's nothing fancy. There is a index.html file, a main.js file, just a form that's being run, a preload file, and a renderer. And these two are actually empty, so there's nothing in there yet. To run it, we can just go to the terminal and type npm run start, and that will load it up. You can see that it's pretty, pretty bare. This is all there is. So what we want to do now is connect it to a database and pull some data from the database to show it on screen. To do that, we need to first create a database. In this situation, we're going to use SQLite. So we're going to use a database manager to create an SQLite database. And I highly recommend dBeaver. It's a universal database manager. It works with everything, uh, including SQLite, but you can also connect it to MySQL or any other database type if you want. So I've got dBeaver open over here. I'll go and click on uh, open new connection right over here. And I can choose the kind of database that I want to connect to. So I want SQLite, just gonna look for it. This is it, click next. And then you can select where you want to save your SQLite file. I'm just gonna put it on desktop for now. My SQLite.db, it's a DB extension for SQLite. And that didn't work because dBeaver can't really create a file. So what we need to do is go back to Electron and we're just going to create a new file, call it mytest.db. DB is the extension for SQLite usually. And then go back to dBeaver over here. Let's just load it up. Yep. And then we can create a connection to the file that we just created. So I'm going to select SQLite again. I'm going to use browse and mytest.db. This was the file finish. And now my, my connection is established. The database is still empty but we can create a table if we want. So let's call this table uh, test table and we're gonna give it a primary key. So I'm gonna use ID. The data type for ID is integer of course and we gotta mark not null and auto increment. SQLite will automatically make it the primary identifier. I'm gonna create another column, I'll call it name. And this time we're gonna use text as the data type, we're gonna use not null and press OK. So we've got a database table called test, which has two fields, ID and name. So let's use it inside our project and see how to work with it. Let's persist it first. Let's enter some records too. I'm gonna go into data and enter some records. So, okay. Now our database is here and it does have the data that we've created, but to use it inside the software, we need to install an NPM package called Beta SQLite. So I'm gonna just put that in. It's called Beta SQLite with pre-builds. This is the one that you wanna use with Electron. So just install it. It's gonna take a couple of minutes. So we can connect with the database now. And the way I like to do it is create a models folder because I like my things properly organized and I like to put all the database classes, all the database connections in a single place. So we're gonna create a file called DB manager. So I typically call it dbmgr.js and just have a constant there that, that exposes the better SQLite module that we'd included. And we're gonna expose the DB, we're gonna connect to the DB 
using const db equals new sqlite function it's a new object of sqlite type and we'll just put in the path to the database that we have here so this one is called main uh, my test dot db and this should be connecting it to the db in question uh, by the way you need to make sure that the that the path that you specify is in relation to the file dbmgr you can see that the database is actually one level above it so we can just do this and it should work fine next i like to create separate modules for each database table that we have so i'm going to create one for the test table that we have let's call it testmgr.js and in this file we're going to first include the database manager this is it dbmgr and we're just going to put it in an object db and now i can actually write functions to get my data so if, for example get names equals to and you can write your database access code over here so i'm going to write in my sql query i think it was called name just let's just quickly check yeah, it was called test so of course test and then i'm gonna paste in some code so sqlite makes it very easy for you to access the database using sql statements you can just call the sql statement and it will expose an object which will let you refer to the table values the field values by properties as properties so here we've got three lines of code that's all db.prepare this is preparing the sql statement that we had in and in this particular line we are getting all the values from this table statement.all it's getting all the values and we are just returning it so it's it's, it's actually exports.getName so any module that imports the testman mgr module they can call the get name function and that's what i'm going to show you next all right so here we are in our preload file the preload file just to remind you is a file where you decide what should be exposed to the main world or the front end of the app anything that you put in preload will have access to the node.js runtimes but you can choose what you want to bring to the front end so that's exactly what we're going to do first we're going to bring in our test mgr file so let's have const test mgr And then we will need to create this function. So let's create a new function. It's a Lambda function. I use uh, empty arguments because we are not passing any arguments to it. And now we will call testmgr.getNames. Again. We have our function. The next task is to make this available to the main world or the front end of the browser so that it can be called and you can actually show these names on the browser. Let's do that. So for that, we need to import the context, context bridge. It's in the electron module, the main module. And now we'll call context bridge dot expose in main world and we can give our bridge a name so it can be anything we can call it api or you can call it bridge whatever you want and finally export the function so we have the we have a function called get names and we are exporting the get names function there and this can now be called inside the index.html file so let's do that we have a renderer js over here and frankly why should we write another script when we can put things in render.js this is what we should be doing if the division of works the html file should be an html file and all the javascript code that's on the renderer side should be in a renderer js or any javascript file you can call it anything you want actually but before that we need to have a place where we want to display this thing so let's create a new div and give it an idea of names and we're going to populate this we're going to put in some data over there 
let's do that here to render the js and we're going to be calling this function so let's do that to show the names we're going to use the document dom content loaded event so just going to put some content over here going to get the div and we're going to turn the names array into a string let's divide it with a br tag so pretty simple so now we should see the names in our javascript using our JavaScript code. It should be connected to a database. Let's check it out. Let's see if it runs. All right, so the app didn't work and we see a couple of issues there. First, we need to give a correct part to the preload script. Second, the better SQLite 3 did not compile because it was compiled with a different node version. And finally, we have a error in reading get names because preload is not there. So let's solve them one by one. First thing, let's include the correct path to preload. And this should be in main. Here is the preload folder. So we've, we've done their name plus preload.js, this right over here. But let's try this and let's try it one more time now. Still not there. All right, we, I get it. It's because this module is not working. So we got to fix it first. That's the reason why things are not working. So let's do that. Okay, so first we got to install Electron Rebuild to build Electron for us, all the components. And this is the command to do that. npm install D is for development mode only. It's going to take a couple of minutes, I guess, a minute. All right, so now let's just try and install all the node packages once more. All of them are installed. So I had to call Electron Rebuild with the full path, with the complete path to node modules. And I had to specify bin folder and then Electron Rebuild. And you can see that it's building better SQLite 3. And I think it's ready now. So let's try it now. Let's see if it works. NPM run start. Here we go again. All right, so that error is gone. Now we have a small error. Q QRI is not defined. Probably I forgot to put in a declaration. Yep, this is the fun part of programming. Where is QRY? Yep, over here. You can see that I have SQL, but I'm trying to prepare QRY. So yep, not surprising. And now again, no such table test. Let's Let's find that out. All right, so the error in this file again is in DB Manager this time. We have to put a path to the root folder and this fixes it. And now we are actually getting some result, but you can see that this is these are not the names that we expected. And that's because this is actually an object. So if you refer to a table over here, it's got two columns, ID and coder. So this is an object, it's not an array of string, it's an array of object. So we'll need to change the code a little bit. We just can't join it directly. We'll need to map this a little and uh, extract only the name field. So let's do that now. Let's call map and we can just have a and name this this should work let's check it out okay so finally we have the names we did get the names from our database and you can basically now write standard SQL queries to connect with the database let's say we wanted to add a new name here 
so I'm just gonna put a new function add name and I'm gonna take a new name and just gonna write an insert query And let's use string interpolation. I really like int string interpolation. It's a fun thing. So here we have, and instead of db prepare, we'll just call db run, and we can delete this. So let's test it out too. In our index.html, uh, in our renderer actually, let's call this function. First, we'll need to create a reference in preload. I'm gonna do that very quickly now. We have this function over here. It just calls test manager add name and puts the name in there. And we have, a, we are exposing it in the main world. Now let's just call it. Here we are in the renderer and let's make it simple. Let's just call it in DOM content loaded. Let's see what happens. Now we should run it. And when we run it, there should be a new entry in the database. And boom, we have an error. This time we made a mistake by calling run. The command is actually db.exec with the component that we're using. So let's try one more time. And here we go. Got the names, things should be, things look to be running fine. Let's check our database. There is a new entry of G2. I'm gonna just delete this line from the database. We don't want to add another G2 and stop, run again. So you should see a G2 in the name. So it's there. I have shown you very, very briefly how to connect to a SQLite database from Electron. And we pulled data from it and we have added some data to it. Now I want to talk about the organization a little bit. This is my way of doing things. I like this better. All the components that are connected to the database, I like them in a models folder. And you have a main DB manager class, which is nothing just a quick shortcut to the database file itself. You can put this individually in every file too. But the problem is then if you change your database name for any reason, then you will need to modify this in every file. So just to make it simpler, I like to have it in one file and just call this file in every single file. And I like to have all the functions that are connected to that particular table or that particular part of the model from that from a single file so this time for example we have a test table i will have a file called test mgr or test manager whatever you want to call it and i will have all the functions that are connected to test in that particular module and in your code you can just import that module like this one here and you can call the functions on it so this is a great way to keep things encapsulated and organized properly so even if you have a database that has dozens of tables, you can work with it easily because it's all in one place and you know exactly what is happening where. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please give me a like and subscribe to my channel to encourage me to make more learning videos. We'll be talking a lot about Electron and other technologies too, all across development category. So I'm going to talk about full stack development. I'm going to talk about Windows application development. I'm going to talk about front end, back end videos, every single thing, because I'm using these technologies every day in my programming journey. And this channel is an attempt to bring it to you, all the learning that I get during doing the actual projects that I make on an everyday basis.